Hey what's up guys, this is Oakley and CA has just dropped a whole bundle of news on us. Now this is going to be mostly pertaining with the release of Total War Attila. So we now have a finalized global release date on February 17th, 2015. That's going to be across all territories. And the asking price for this game is actually going to be about 75% the asking price of the original full Rome 2 launch. This is going to be sort of a an interesting game that's supposed to be its own title, but it's not fully... Um, you know, a new game. It's built off the old engine and it's got a lot of polished and, and tweaking to it. So they're going to be asking for 75% of the original cost and that's going to bring you down to about 45 bucks right here. So I think that is pretty reasonable to be honest for what we're going to get. A lot of the bugs and glitches of Rome 2 will have been ironed out with all the patches. I think Rome 2 is super playable right now. It's very fun, very balanced and it's working well. There's still more glitches to be worked out but I think if you use that as your base for Attila Total War I think that's a fair asking price. Um, now the next question is going to be, you know, how do we handle the pre-order and so it seems like what they're going to be trying to do is to entice us into buying the pre-order is that if you pre-order you're going to be getting this what they're calling the Viking Forefathers Culture Pack where they bundle these Nordic uh, tribes the Geats the Danes and the Jutes I hope I'm pronouncing those all correctly and those are going to be about an eight dollar value that if you pre-order early you get those for free we'll talk about this in a little bit but here's another image that you can see of sort of the um, uh, the special edition that you can get. Now, if you do get the special edition, that's a that's a physical copy. It'll come with a 64-page biography of Attila the Hun from a series of renowned military his, uh, history specialists. It does seem like they're going to be going with Osprey Publishing, and they do note a couple of military historians. Um, I haven't quite heard about these guys, but I do sort of trust this one a bit more than the previous Total War novel that they launched. Um, but it, it's kind of nice that they're going to be bundling this with history again. I think that's a good move. Again, with this, you also are going to get uh, a, a, a tileable map that you can fold out. I really like that with the physical copies. You used to have that back in the day. Don't see that too much with the, the new games. And you can see the various uh, overviews of the available factions. And then over here, you're going to be seeing the Viking Forefathers culture pack. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the Viking Forefathers pack. So as I said, you don't have to pre-order Attila, but if you do, you get the DLC for about eight American dollars. Um, and this is this is going to be a, bit of a point of controversy because day one DLC is something that I don't fully support. And it's something that uh, it, it's, it's a little hard to do um, because... On the one hand, I love the Total War franchise. I know I'm going to get it anyways, but I think it's all about sending a message. And I think at this point, gamers are just getting abused. Um, you see this across all sorts of launch titles, especially this year. Uh, I myself bought you know, an Xbox One and Master Chief Collection uh, just to play that game. And it, it was riddled with all sorts of glitches. You still can't play multiplayer. Disappointment! So you see all these games, you know, Watch Dogs, GTA, uh, all these titles, Destiny, um, even the Rome 2. You see all these games, Assassin's Creed Unity springs to mind. All these games where, you know, these um, publishers are, are pushing people to get these games out. And they're just trying to milk us to the brim, hype us to extremities, trying to extract as much money as you can beforehand with pre-orders, with, you know, all this stuff that, you know, I didn't quite buy into the idea. Oh, no, I didn't really believe that people were going out and carving out huge chunks of their games removing it from the day one release and then selling it to you again. That's a practice that I didn't quite believe in before, but now it's just, it's in your face. It's, you can't, you know, deny that it's happening. And I think again, when we see them doing this with Total War Attila, with these three factions as day one DLC, that is just, it, it's, it sucks. And I don't think the people at CIA intended for it to be that way. I think it's more of a marketing push that the entire industry is seeing and that Sega is pushing on them. And so I think as gamers, we have a responsibility to, to, to vote with our wallets. And I think what I won't be doing this time around, even though I stated that I will be getting the Viking Forefathers Culture Pack, I will not be pre-ordering this game. I think that's, you know, just that I'm voting with my wallet. And I think you guys should do the same. Despite Total War Attila seeming like it's going to be solid, I don't think we as gamers, we as consumers can support this time of practice. And I hope, I really actually hope, that Total War Attila sales for pre-orders are much, much lower than expected. I hope they're super low, but I hope people will buy the games and the DLC in the future just so we can send a message and that we can dissuade certain companies from these practices. And I think it's something we need to adhere to. It's something that I talk to myself about, and it's something that I think needs to be done. We need to stand up. And even though I only purchase, you know, a couple games here and there, and, you know, the Total War franchise is going to be my, my, my tried and true go-to game. I know I'm going to get it. Why not pre-order it and save myself money? I think we need to make a stand and make a, you know, uh, 
it's hard for me to say this, um, but don't. I, I would say I'm not going to pre-order it. Do what you will, but I think it sends more of a message to vote with our wallets and not pre-order this game. Wait till it's out, then pay the extra dollars to get the the inevitable DLC that you you're going to get. And hopefully that means with the next iteration of Total War, um, I hope the industry will will react to this because it's a very dangerous thing to have more and more companies following these practices. Um, you know, moving release dates closer and closer, not allowing the developers. Um, to actually get the full-fledged, lovable, you know, creation that they want out to the gamers. And then additionally, you know, carving out huge swaths of the game. You know, we need to reverse that trend. So that's going to be my take on it. I think the Viking uh, factions look great. We can even look over a couple of the stills right now. Look at this. And keep in mind, every time I talk about these images and the things that I think are great about this, keep in mind that I think we should reserve judgment on this. But, but for instance, look at this image. Look, look I will... I will I will cave to the hype that this image gives you because look at this. This is an awesome um, winter time effect. Look at the details on the ground. It looks amazing. Look at the, the boats ramped up on the side. And look at especially, this is going to be a siege of a city, a naval assault. And in Rome 2, the naval assaults were never really like this. It never really felt like um, it was a combined uh land and sea battle because the city itself didn't really bleed onto the coast as much as I would have liked on all maps whereas this one you can really see the city itself bleeding down onto the coast you can see the dockyards you can especially see the catapults set up earlier with their own defenses lined up in front of it it's more of a um uh, a staggered defense, which I think is a good move with Attila. They were trying to make these cities multi-stage cities where you can really defend all of the different um, levels of it, and I think that's something we really like, and something that I think is really showing through in this game. You see the fire propagation in the back, you see the um, all sorts of cool stuff about this, but again, it goes back to the fact that this um, the industry is now hyped into spending so much money on just making you drool and salivate over these images that they try and get you to pre-order. So every time I hype you for this game and I hype over these images, just keep that in the back of your mind that we have to vote with our wallets. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Again, we look at this next image. I mean, look at the textures. Look at the uh, what they've done in here. Now, I don't think it would be past CA to Photoshop these images. It's something they've shown that they've done before. And I hope the game looks as good. But again, we have to be wary of what they're doing with this. But then again, I am super hyped for this game. And just look how good the boat models are. I hope they're going to improve naval combat. And I hope that this is something that uh, we'll see improved upon naval conflict. But again, if they're going to introduce a new iteration of the game, you better damn expect that they're going to fix naval combat. Because in Rome 2, it was super buggy. Um, from the start today, it's still not even fixed. The AI handles it a little better, but those naval battles are totally not fun. So if they do expect me to invest heavily in this game with the pre-order, and they expect to carve out DLC, they better, you know, um, supply us with, you know, a, a completely outstanding game. Um, and then we go over to this next one. You start to see a little bit more of the fire effects on the ships, the torn um, sails. Maybe this has something to do with fire damage to the ships and even decrease mobility if you can damage an opponent's um, sails just like you could in Napoleon with the, uh, with, uh, um, what was it, grape shot? No, chain shot, yeah. Maybe there's something like that. Um, but again, it, the game just looks great, it looks polished. And here actually I was able to pick up a couple of the campaign images. Campaign map looks just like Rome 2. Um, and you start to see a little bit of the, the view from what the, the Nordic factions are going to look like up in the up in the north. And keep in mind that they've mentioned another one of the details of the campaign is going to be the fact that there's going to be this rolling progressive climate change where the winner is going to prove more and more brutal. Which is why these factions are probably going to be having a lot of marauding and raiding down into the Western Roman Empire. And maybe even follow the path of the Saxons and Assalta. Uh, the island of uh, Great Britain but uh, you see a couple more of these images and I'd be interested to see what the specific fleets are if you have specific quick fast raiding ships to go ahead and do these Viking raids that weren't you know necessarily endemic to the uh, this time period they would have been more frequent later on um, but I think hopefully you can get you know a little bit of the uh, the Viking raids going on a little earlier than history would predict um, but yeah that's gonna be it for this recap of what's been released by CA, I hope you guys keep in mind that we as consumers have to vote with our wallets and I myself am not going to be pre-ordering this. I don't think I can support the day one free OC one more time, especially with all that's going on in the gaming community. I hope you guys can share that, um, that sentiment and you can appreciate it and uh, hopefully you guys can stick to your guns with that. But uh, another thing I wanted to ask you at the end of this video is also the fact that I will be having the chance to 
talk to some of the CA staff and interview them uh, in an upcoming event. I can't release too much information about this, but I would like that uh, if you guys could please go ahead in the comments below and pose some of the questions that you would like me to field to them. I will be sifting through the comments a lot and trying to see what we can ask them. So um, hopefully if you could do more interesting questions, nothing too accusatory like, oh, why are you doing this free LC, DLC stuff? Nothing like that, but more like, um, I don't know, I'll let you come up with it. But uh, try and come up with poignant, interesting questions that I could field to CA. I will obviously be coming up with my own, but uh, I would love to hear your input. So anyways, thanks so much for listening in for this little rant. I will see you guys next time.